Christ Jesus has triumphed for Satan and death, and now praise his name, I am free, although he has gone to his Father's right hand, may Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the Gospel in Sermon and Song sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California, released on a special network of selected radio stations in the United States, Canada, and overseas, maintained by the prayerful, free will, tax-deductible gifts of listeners. Bill Gothard, director of Basic Youth Conflicts, who recently conducted a pastor's seminar in the Pasadena Civic Auditorium, gave us a tape of the earlier Hollywood seminar where 10,000 men and women sang glorious gospel songs. We were so thrilled we decided to let our Lutheran Gospel Hour singers hear a portion of this tape. Listen. Yes. give thee praise that thou dost raise up spiritual organizations that produce revival as a result of dedicated leadership. We thank thee for Bill Gothard and the staff 
that truly is given to God in reaching the pastors, the Christian leaders, the Christian people, and a real revival movement that's Bible-based. And we pray that together with many other such similar organizations, few as large or as effective, but all that are serving thee for that one intent purpose, that thy coming may be quickened as God's people are stirred and sinners saved. So blessed today our united ministry and reaching souls for Christ. We ask it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I am thinking today Joe Erickson's singing of this month's Song of the Month, Ashamed of Jesus I'll Never Be, with his brother Vernon accompanying on the violin and Lauren Whitney at the organ, has been God-blessed and most heart-searching. Today we hear it for the fourth and last time. If you meant to write and ask for a copy of Words and Music but failed to do so, then remember this is the last call. Ask for the Song of the Month, Ashamed of Jesus and address your letter to Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1-2, Pasadena, California. Listeners in Canada may write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan.
some ways it's later than you think, prophetically, for instance, but in one way it's earlier than you think. Summertime is just beginning, a wonderful season, but also a scary time, that is, for gospel broadcasters. Graduations, vacations, conventions, anniversary gatherings are only a few of the many attention takers that make radio friends so occupied with the many things that monthly contributions are postponed and neglected, making it impossible for us to regularly take care of our monthly payments to radio stations for precious time used in broadcasting God's Word at home and overseas. We pray that you, dear friends, will not forget us. Put a LGS mark on your calendar for each of the summer months or whatever reminder you think you may need. Pray also daily for us. We'll be waiting your regular letters addressed to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California, zip code 91102. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K, 3K4. Once more, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California, 91102. In Canada, Lutheran Gospel Hour, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, S7K, 3K4.
turn today to the prophet Isaiah chapter 59. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue hath muttered perverseness. It has often been said that conditions have never been as terrible as they are now, that young people have never had so many temptations as they meet today, that ungodliness, atheism, irreverence, and blasphemy against holy things have never compared with that of this age. Now you may question this, but Scripture tells us that evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. And so in 2 Timothy 3.13 you have that word, that certainly explains the age that we live in. It is also in accordance with Scripture that as God gives the greater light, if people refuse it, they harden themselves and become worse. We surely cannot deny that we are an enlightened age. We are the space age, an age far above that of other ages as far as enlightenment, improvements, and uh, those things that would tend to make life certainly outstanding. But together with all the advantages have come the disadvantages, the hardening of heart. Why are there so few who really earnestly seek God today? Is the gospel too old-fashioned? Has it lost its power? Has God failed? Oh, no, you say, and I agree with you. No, no, a thousand times no. God's holy word declares, The Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy. His hand has reached sinners deep in the mire of sin today as of days of yore. I have preached in slum missions and the skid row sections, and I have preached in some of the more elite churches of our day. And yet I find that man everywhere needs that hand of God that can reach them where they are, because man by nature is inclined to put distance between himself and God. But God's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy. His hand has reached out and is reaching out today, and we thank God for all the noble cases of those that come out of darkness into God's wonderful light. Notice, too, that the prophet Isaiah says that his hand certainly is not shortened, nor is his ear heavy. Elderly people began to lose their hearing, and it's very difficult. You must shout at them. But God, who is eternal, never lacks. He hears the faintest cry of the weakest sinner, and he has heard the cry of distress again and again. Prayer has been answered. It has been my joy in evangelistic meetings to note again and again that God is still on the throne. He hears those that cry to him. Children have cried, teenagers and young people, young married people, elderly people. What a joy to see the hand of God reaching out to them. So certainly we cannot blame God because that the, the scriptures have been ignored. No, it is man's sin that has separated between man and God. And therefore, you will note in our text, it is your iniquities, says the, song, or says the writer prophet Isaiah, that have separated between you and God, hiding God's face so that he will not and he cannot hear. Because your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Iniquities indicate the crookedness, the perverseness of man's nature. We have one word, sin, which means missing the mark. We have another word, transgression, which means willful disobedience and trespassing. And then you have the word iniquity, which denotes the crookedness of man's nature. He is inclined away from God. It is the crookedness and perverseness of man's original nature that causes transgression and missing the mark. So the Lord says, your iniquities have separated between you and your God. He goes on to say, your hands are defiled with blood. This was acknowledged by the Jews when they said, his blood be upon us and our children. When Christ was accused and was to be nailed to the cross, then it was that the Jewish people as a race said, His blood be upon us, and they have tasted the results of that curse that followed the Jew to this very day, hiding God's face. 
But many have seen their folly and have turned back to God. And even today, God is preparing their own country for them, though there are many returning in unbelief. Yet the day is going to come when they're going to see him whom they crucified and shall acknowledge him. Yes, hands are defiled with blood. Now this should be acknowledged by the Gentiles as well. We are also guilty of the death of Christ. It was our sins that brought him there. And if you haven't seen that, you haven't seen the meaning of redemption. Christ died for the ungodly. And the ungodly were not only the Roman soldiers, the Jewish leaders that caused Christ to be crucified. Gentiles are included. The same ungodliness that caused Christ to go to the cross, the same ungodliness of the Jew is of the Gentile, so that all men must acknowledge it was our sins that nailed him to the tree. On judgment day your hands will be filled with innocent blood if you in life haven't confessed your sins and your sinfulness. Now that's one sin of rejecting Jesus is enough to condemn, but sin never goes unaccompanied. It multiplies, it grows so fast. And therefore notice from the hands, the prophet goes on to the fingers. Your fingers are defiled with iniquity. In other words, who can count them? We count think by our, we, by our fingers, but I tell you this is beyond the counting, not merely ten in number. There were ten commandments, and man becomes guilty on every count, on every finger. You are a transgressor, but go way beyond that. Iniquities are more than one on each finger. They are multiplied, and therefore the multiplicity of sins stand before the sinner, and the question comes, can God forgive me the works of my hands of sin? But not only the evil of the hands and of the fingers, but your lips have spoken lies, says the prophet. And the Lord said, no liar shall inherit the kingdom of God. What are some of these lies? Well, first of all, broken promises. The young who say, when I get older, I'll accept Christ. And then the years of youth come and go, and man has yet not yet accepted Christ. Those broken promises are lies. Are you there, my friend, today, who have made promises, but you've broken them? Are you amongst those that are sick, who say, if God makes me well, I'll give him my heart? Many people have promised God on the sick bed, but when they became well, they've forgotten their promises. God, if you let me live now, I'll be a Christian, so many have said. But when the cause has been removed, then sin takes a hold again. It's meaningless confession if you say, I'm a sinner. Now that's true, but if you're unsaved, you make it a lie by not accepting Jesus, the Savior of sinners. Because it is truly meaningless to be reciting a creed that we are all poor, lost, condemned sinners if you haven't come to Christ and claimed him as your Savior. And so you have your fingers, your lips have spoken lies, your fingers have, are defiled with iniquity, and finally your tongue has muttered perverseness. This means willfully blaming God, and that's so unreasonable. Your sins are the cause of all evil, and therefore God, again, would have you reckon with the words of Ezekiel 18.30, Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Notice the two things that God calls for, repent and turn. Both of these call for a decision. I will acknowledge my sin. I'm willing to turn away from it. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin, saith the Lord. On a $5 bill received in a saloon before Prohibition days, this was found written. This is the last of a large fortune. Rum did it. Oh, how sad to see a man's resources dwindle. How sad to see the years fly by and sinners wearing themselves out in the service of sin, Satan, and the devil. In hell the damned shall cry, I am the sinner that Christ died for, but I despised him, and iniquity has become my ruin. Either you can know the meaning of true revival, this is the day that the Lord calls, and you can sense, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. He's reaching out today in so many ways that he couldn't use before. Today we have the gospel in song and spoken word on the radio, the literature campaigns, 
the literacy campaigns likewise, the spread of the word, the learning of the word in many heathen lands, and here at home multiplied ways whereby you may hear and perceive that God is love, and he doesn't want the sinner's death, but he wants us to come to him and know salvation and life in his name. And so in the closing moments of this broadcast, my friend, I would plead with you, as one who has known the way of the gospel for many years now, as a young lad at the age of 14, I came to see more than my sins, I saw my sinfulness and the need of a Savior. And kneeling there at the foot of the cross of Calvary, I found one who saved me from my iniquities, who blotted out my transgressions, who showed me that my sins were atoned for. And these years, I have become an advisor to many young people and many old. I go to many Bible camps and conferences and evangelistic meetings besides the radio ministry. And I say, and I get to see, the Lord is able to reach souls. His hand is not shortened. His ear is not deaf. Now don't your ear become deaf to the calls of God. But God grant by his grace that you may be a, a good attentive listener who shall say, This day and in every way I shall serve the Lord as I first give him my soul and then my life. Oh, will you give heed to this message today and to your convictions be true? There's danger and death in a further delay. My friend, he is now calling you. Make room for the Savior today. Make room for the Savior today. If you would win mansions in heaven, make room for the Savior. 